Entertainment Tonight presents E.T. Vault Unlocked Oprah. You know you've made it when Entertainment Tonight is talking to you. With five decades of never-before-seen interviews. My greatest gift is my ability to be myself on camera. What you never knew about Oprah, the talk show host. It's information with inspiration. The actress. And I said to the producer, I will do anything to get in this movie. And the icon. I want to change the way the world works. From her childhood growing up in poverty. I was raped by a relative. To becoming a multi-billion dollar mogul. I have a lot of money. How do you use it to the greater and best good? Plus, her life's biggest regret. Big, 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 big mistake. This is E.T. Vault <laughs> Unlocked Oprah. Not just a little show, entertainment tonight. Na, 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 na. A leader, a survivor, a bona fide TV titan. Welcome to Entertainment Tonight. Or, you know what, better yet, it's the Oprah Winfrey Show. <laughs> you could say she's one of our favorite things to talk about. We salute the woman who not only created an empire, but also transformed into the most powerful media influencer. You want to be an empowered woman, empower other women. Life is about trying to grow yourself to whatever is the next level. Why do people keep wanting you to run for president? That is just not gonna happen. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I just cause that would not be my strength. Oprah's strength? Where do we start? Empathy, connection, real talk, all reasons she's the queen of all media. My goal is just to do good work. And if other people want to recognize that and acknowledge it and, and you get on Entertainment Tonight about it, that's just great. Yep, we're all about it and the numbers don't lie. Oprah's net worth is estimated at $2.8 billion. Also staggering, Winfrey's racked up more than 5,000 episodes of television. I'm Oprah Winfrey, and welcome to the very first National Oprah Winfrey Show! It's information with inspiration. I think that what our show has evolved to, I have never been prouder of the work that we have done. For 25 years, Oprah taped her iconic talk show at the studio she built, something only three women have done. Mary Pickford, Lucille Ball, Oprah Winfrey. We're the only three who built our own studios. That work ethic has helped make Oprah the go-to for big celeb sit-downs. Were you silent or were you silenced? The latter. Are you bleaching your skin? Can I have a skin disorder. I'm just embarrassed that I didn't make my marriage work. In 2011, Oprah launched her own network. If you watch for an hour, if you watch for five hours, I don't want to waste your time. As for the print world, Oprah's conquered that too. She's co-authored 20 books, and her O Magazine had a 20-year run, rebranding online as Oprah Daily. I think it's really unhealthy to go around thinking, really unhealthy to think, you know, am I powerful? What kind of influence do I have? I don't, I just do the work, I really do. Oprah's empire also includes Weight Watchers. I love bread, doesn't mean I'm eating a loaf of it every day. The 70-year-old has always been candid about her weight loss journey. I refuse to have my life dictated by numbers. I can't believe I'm still talking about weight. My life is dedicated to losing weight. I mean, who could forget this? 67 pounds since July 7th. In 1988, Oprah dramatically wheeled out a wagon of fat. Big, 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 big mistake. When I look at that show, I think it was one of the biggest ego trips of my life. Looking back now, what would you have told yourself? I would have said, don't do it. <laughs> it's a great TV moment, but don't do it. The producer's like, oh my God, you're gonna drag the wagon of fat. And when she joined Weight Watchers in 2015, its stock price doubled in one day. Shares jumped 11% when Oprah and the company signaled support for weight loss drugs. What's going on? Because if this is Weight Watchers, please sign me up tonight. Well, it's, it's not one thing, it's everything. It's not one thing, it's everything. It's not one thing, it's everything. Now, have you ever wondered what Oprah would have been if she wasn't, well, Oprah? I always thought I was going to be a fourth grade teacher. Well, seems teaching us all was destiny. Her journey began when, at 16 years old, Oprah was hired to read the news on a Nashville radio station. The next year? Entering the Miss Fire Prevention Contest. That's how this career began. And I was the only black girl in the pageant. Everybody else had red hair. The question to me was, uh, what did I want to do with my life? And I had seen Barbara Walters on the Today Show that morning. I thought, aha, that's a good thing to be. So um, I said I wanted to become a journalist. Well, she won the pageant, and at 19, she made history, becoming the youngest person and first black woman to anchor the news on Nashville television. In 1976, she relocated to Baltimore to anchor the 6 p.m. news, but... I got fired 
Well, you, you well, well, demoted. I was not a good television reporter. I was too emotional. So she reluctantly took a job co-hosting the station's new talk show, People Are Talking. Every day, this okay, is here it. you go nuts. Baltimore is where I learned all of my best life lessons. Baltimore worked me. I didn't just work here, Baltimore worked me. Her next move, a morning talk show in Chicago in 1984. In just one month, it became the number one local talk show surpassing ratings for Donahue. Less than a year later, The Oprah Winfrey Show was born. My greatest gift is my ability to be myself on camera. People say, you know, gee, I'm hot now, I'm doing so great now. I've been in television since I was 19 years old, so I've been warming up for a while. E.T. first met Oprah in 1985. Big hair, doing her own makeup, her office the size of a closet. You know you've made it when Entertainment Tonight is talking to you. This was just weeks before the premiere of her Oscar-nominated movie, The Color Purple. When the show goes national in September, people will say, oh, that's the girl who was in that movie, and now she has a talk show, but I've been doing that for the longest time. My whole career has been based upon a connection to the people. So I know that if your number one intention is to serve the people, the ratings will come. The Oprah Winfrey Show went on to become the highest rated talk show in television history, making Oprah a millionaire at 32. For the first 10 years of this show, I didn't have a vacation. I didn't. We were doing 220 shows a year. I have more balance in my life now than I did when I first started. I'm going to be really hurt if I wake up and it was a dream. That dream would last 25 years. Then, in 2011, came the end of an era and the final episode of The Oprah Winfrey Show. I won't say goodbye. I'll just say, until we meet again. I never wanted to be the person who didn't know when to exit the party. It was the glorious, most amazing platform anybody could have to speak to millions of people every day. And I think I exited at, at, at exact the right moment. One of the attributes that made Oprah's show such a success was her vulnerability, especially when it came to her own painful past. I was raped by a relative. At the time, he was 19 years old. The fact of the matter is, it's a big deal um, when it happens to you. Seduced as a child by someone who is a close member of the family. Oprah used her voice to be a champion for other victims. I would first like to thank you for holding hearings on this important issue. In 1991, she testified on Capitol Hill to rally support for the National Child Protection Act, requiring abusers to be registered in a government database. A lot of people have come up to me and said thank you. Oprah is without a doubt a survivor of a very difficult childhood. She grew up in rural Mississippi, surrounded by poverty. The deepest emotion and most prominent emotion I would say I felt as a child was was being alone, being alone and being lonely and not feeling loved and getting into trouble in my teens like so many teenagers do for the same reason. At 14, she became pregnant and gave birth to a baby boy who did not survive. Afterwards, she moved in with her father who helped change the trajectory of her life. When that child died, my father said to me, this is your second chance. This is your opportunity to seize this moment and make something of your life. Now, I know better, so I can do better. Oprah ultimately decided not to have more of her own children later in life. Instead, she did this. These are my girls. These are our girls. It's one fine day, ain't it? Oh, I think it is, girl. In 2007, E.T. made the 10,000-mile journey to South Africa for the opening of the Oprah Winfrey Leadership Academy for Girls. What should we call Miss Oprah? What do we Mom. call Mom? All this time, I thought I was giving to them, but during this whole process of meeting them and now being responsible for them, I feel that they have given me more than I could have ever imagined. I have a lot of money. How do you use it to the greater and best good? How do you use it? So I donate to a lot of charities, mostly privately. And what I learned is it's, it's wonderful to do good work, but I don't want to just do good work. I want to change the way the world works. And Oprah has done just that by giving away an estimated $400 million of her own money to a variety of causes. What would you say has been your biggest personal transformation yet? The biggest transformation for me was living my life with intention and about what you actually want to do. Because that's what every sunrise means. It's, yeah. oh gosh, it's another chance to get it right.
but I kill him dead for I let him be me. I watched the color purple. I don't know how many times. I, it's still hard for me to see myself. A year ago, I was on my way to California, and I said to the producer, I will do anything to get in this movie. The most exciting, I think, was hearing Steven Spielberg say, you've got the part. Now that was just, I mean, out of this world. Yes, even Oprah had to audition for her big screen debut in 1985. Ironically, it was her talk show that helped her land the part when power producer Quincy Jones was watching. I saw her on, on the television, show, her, her talk show in Chicago, bang. She's Sophie. <laughs> but acting for Spielberg gave Oprah major stage fright. So it came up to me and whispered in my eye, you know, would you, do you think you could cry? And I said, oh, sure, because if Steven Spielberg asked you to cry, you want to give him a bucket or two. First day on the set, and I couldn't cry. I couldn't cry. So then I turned around, I started plucking eyelashes and poking them under my contact lenses, you know? That day it didn't work. So I was, I was so upset, you know, so I thought I was going to get kicked out of the movie. Oprah says she earned just $35,000 for the performance that earned her an Oscar nomination. What i like to do more, I'd love to. And I think that I will. I did all of my own stunt work. I mean, I say I love saying that. Every woman I know has some of that fire inside. And what do you do when you have no place to put that fire? You might hook up with Terrence Howard if he's next door. I got you. From The Butler to A Wrinkle in Time, Oprah has starred in over 35 projects. She helped produce 60 more, including the Color Purple movie musical and 2014 Selma. In 2015, Oprah helped organize a march on Dr. King Day to mark the 50th anniversary of the protest. We marched alongside, proud to be a part of the historic moment. And Oprah is right here over my shoulder, marching towards the Edmund Pettus Bridge. You're actually walking in the footsteps of people who come before you. I was visiting the set one day when Oprah was first starting. And he said, do you want to be in the movie? I went, OK. There I am. So I was one of the extras. But literally, you have to blink and put it on pause to see me. Who knew? Gail King dropped that color purple Easter egg on Late Night with Seth Meyers. And look, we can't celebrate Oprah without celebrating their forever friendship that started nearly five decades earlier. Gail and I have been friends since she was 21 and I was 22. And there has not been a day where we have not spoken, at least once or twice a day. There's not a day that doesn't go by. The last time you laughed so hard it hurt. Oh, on the phone with yeah, Gail, we're talking about somebody. I think that I have heard you start a sentence with, well, Gail called me and told me. Gail, so many times. It's true. <laughs> but I did call her and tell her. The besties met as young journalists at Baltimore's WJZ back in 1976. Oprah was an anchor and Gail was a production assistant. There was a big snowstorm and she, she couldn't get home. And I said, you can stay at my house. 10 years later, the world was introduced to Gail on The Oprah Winfrey Show. She became a special correspondent. And who could forget the road trips? <laughs> God, I love to see a man on a horse. I know. True or false, coyotes are monogamous. Yes, they are. I need to find me a coyote, don't I? <laughs> Good morning, America. Oprah Winfrey, when she first wakes up, isn't she pretty? Go ahead, show them that but TV Wait a minute, smoke. and you know what? Turn the camera around and look at Glamour Girl. <laughs> <laughs> the friendship is at the point, though, where you probably don't even have to, you can give each other a look and you know exactly yeah, No, we don't even on. have to give each other a look. Yeah. We are th what we try not to do if we're out <laughs> look is not other. look at each other. I asked Gail yeah. this, if you guys had any secrets. I don't think we have any. You I think do. I know I everything. Really don't. But here's the secret to their 47-year friendship. We have always been so supportive of each other, mm -hmm. but it, you know, it's been lopsided. I mean, she's just been there for me and been there for me and been there for me. She has a life of her own, and now people can see that she has a life of her own. Mm -hmm. The only time that I've ever only time. sensed a hint of, God, I wish that was me, And was, that wasn't even jealousy. It, was it wasn't just jealousy. I wish I could do it too. And that was when I was singing on stage with Tina, Tina Turner. Turner. And you got to come down those steps and dance with her. But you can't that. sing. <laughs> can you? <laughs> She deeply cares about 
doing good in the world, helping everybody be better, do better. Everybody should have a gale. And I love that people have come and they, they introduce yeah. people, even men this say, is this, Oprah, this, this is my gale. my gale. She's my sister, my mother, and my greatest friend, Gail King. Gail isn't Oprah's only ride or die. Her longtime love, Stedman Graham, has been by her side, cheering her on for more than 35 years. Stedman is a special kind of man. It takes a special kind of man, as you know, to stand and step back, be in the shadow of a woman who has a, a persona of power, and to stand in the shadow, hold your own space, and allow the light from that to fall on you, and not to be threatened by it, or not to try to compete with it, or not to resent it in any way. The year was 1986. Not only had The Oprah Winfrey Show just gone into syndication, but the talk show host also met her Honeygram at a charity event. What started as a friendship eventually turned romantic, and the couple made it red carpet official at the Native Sun premiere. Have there been times when you thought the career came first? Definitely. I, I think that this career is extremely important to you. I also realize that you're the star, and that you know this, this is your life and this is what you do, and I support you in that. I'm a different person when I'm with Stedman. Um, I'm not the person that you see on television. I'm just a, I'm a puppy. <laughs> I'm a little puppy wagging my tail. He softens me. After dating for six years, the pair got engaged, only to call off the I do's. Oprah admits she didn't want a marriage. She just wanted to be asked, quote, the moment after I said yes to his proposal, I had doubts. Both Stedman and I say this that had we married, we would not still be together. It's not a traditional relationship, and marriage is a t traditional institution, and certain expectations come with marriage. The secret to what Oprah has called their spiritual partnership? The 70-year-old credits Stedman for creating his own identity beyond being Oprah's man. The thing about our relationship is I want the best for her. I'm dedicated to her happiness, and so that's great for her, and I want her to be the best she could possibly be. He has always been the person who says, dance, sing, be, do what you need to do to be your best. Expecting people to do what you would do in a situation only leads to your disappointment. Just dropping gems all over That's what over she the does. Place. Yes, indeed. That's just one of the many pearls of wisdom that Oprah has gifted us with over the years. And lucky for all of us, this era of Oprah shows no signs of slowing down. No, indeed. We love you. Good night, everybody. Big star does her own powder. I'm Oprah, by the way. Na 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 na. Da na 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 na. Da na 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 na. Is the word retire even in your vocabulary? It is you're not. Busier yeah. than it is not. Good question, so. Michelle. I'll go I first. don't believe no. in it. I don't believe in it. Oprah has been unfiltered with ET <laughs> for over four decades, and the 70-year-old's golden era is just beginning. Up next, a World War II movie directed by Tyler Perry and a Lee Daniels remake of Terms of Endearment with reports that she's taking over Shirley MacLaine's Oscar-winning role. It's going to be spectacular. Yeah. That's all I can say.